Hi everyone, I am so excited to be back and doing my Mondays with Mira. Um, and today's Monday is a fabulous book from Mo Willems, Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed. And let's get started. I'm just going to read a little and then I'm going to talk about um, why this book is so wonderful and why Mo Willems is so wonderful. Uh, this is Hyperion, and they're an arm of um, Disney. They're an independent arm, and they do what's known as commercial books, which means books that will be very popular and will sell. They top out at six years of age, so if you want to get published by Hyperion, you need to do books that are for kids younger than six. And you can generally tell the age of the reader by the age of the protagonist or the main character. So this is a very young main character and it deals with things that young children deal with. Woo! <laughs> um, we've got this very wonderful limited muted palette that um, minimal text and just line art with a little bit of color. I mean, don't you wish you could work like this? It's so easy. So anyway, um, let's start. There is so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked mole rats. But for this story, you only need to know three things. One, they are a little bit rat. Two, they are a little bit mole. Three, they are all naked. Well, they were, with one exception. And then he's saying, look. <laughs> and can you guess what we're going to see? Wilbur, the naked mole rat who liked to get dressed. Hello. When the other naked mole rats saw him, they said, Ew, yuck, what are you doing? I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I get dressed, I can be fancy or funny or cool or I can just be an astronaut. When the others heard that, they said, Ooh, yuck, if you like clothes so much, then why don't you open a store or something? Naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. But Wilbur thought that was a great idea. The other naked mole rats did not. They brought Wilbur to a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest, and most naked, naked mole rat ever. Look at that picture, they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his regal bearing. Look at his total lack of clothing. And so it goes. I, oh, the, the language is so great, and I want to deconstruct that a little with you in a minute. Um, so let me just read a tiny bit more. Grandpa did look heroic. Grandpa did look regal. But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Ugh, said the other naked mole rats. Don't you get it? Naked mole rats don't wear clothes. I'm pretty unhappy. So I don't want to give it all away. Um, it builds. Oh, and he says, why not? Why not, asked Wilbur. Something had to be done. So I don't want to give it all away because I, I think this is a great mentor text to look at, a great book for writers to buy and really read it, underline things, count how many words there are, do all that great stuff that you can do with a mentor text. Um, the things that make this book so fabulous, and, um, and I just want to do a shout out to Hyperion because they have some fabulous editors there that I had the privilege to meet. Um, and they're just the nicest people and very, very smart. 
So anyway, um, if this is what's known as a fish out of water story, it's about a character that doesn't fit in. And all of us have that experience of feeling like we don't fit, <laughs> that we don't fit in. Um, and being a misfit, being an outsider. It's also about a character who's a rebel. He's doing things that are different. And young children are all about um, pushing limits, seeing, you know, what they can get away with, what the boundaries are. One of the things that makes Mo Willems' work so great is his incredible understanding of children's emotional states. And he does that really, really well, you know, in um, Leonard the, the Monster. What's that called? It's, uh, I did a video of that a while ago. And, you know, Don't Let the Pigeon Ride the Bus, which is another sort of rebellious story about a creature who wants to do stuff that he's not really supposed to be doing. So he really taps into that part of young children's psyche. The language is just wonderful. And the things that he does here that make it so wonderful, we have a little list here. Well, we start off, you know, that we're going to learn a lot about, um, there's, there's so much fascinating stuff to learn about naked mole rats. And just those words, naked mole rats, sound great. Um, but then he details this, but for this story, you only need to know three things. And then he gives us a little list. Um, you don't want to write stuff that has a lot of list stuff in it, where it's really listy. But having a short list is like one, two, three. And it really helps with pacing and moving the story along. And so he gives us this little list, but then there's a but. And the but is the problem. You always have a problem with plot-driven stories. It's not a concept book, it's a plot-driven story. Now usually the protagonist solves the problem themselves by overcoming a series of obstacles. But that doesn't really happen here. And as I said, I'm not going to give it away because I think you should read it. And the fact that that doesn't happen makes it extra original. Um, and then here we've got some onomatopoeia. Ooh, yuck. What are you doing? Questions can be very engaging. And then here, I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I get dressed, I can be fancy or funny or cool, or I can just be an astronaut. And kids love dressing up. So he just is really great at tapping into all these things. And then look at how fun it is seeing Wilbur as a clown, Wilbur as an astronaut. You know, little boys are totally into astronauts. Um, and parents will really enjoy this as well. And then, you know, repetition. Ooh, yuck. That's what they say each time. Um, if you like clothes so much, then why don't you open a store or something? And my husband says, like, the older married equivalent of that, which is when I say, oh, I just love that. And he'll say, well, why don't you marry it then? And then I always say, well, because I'm already married. <laughs> um, and then here, naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. Now, the word sarcastic is very advanced for a young kid, but it's totally contextualized that it means being a little snarky and the parent would be reading it out in that way. So, and then here that, you know, they brought Wilbur to a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest and most naked, naked mole rat ever. So, I mean, that's pure poetry. That is so beautifully written because we've got alliteration, giant, grandpa, we've got some rhyming ends, oldest, greatest, and most um, 
So, you know, oldest, greatest, most. And so we've got, it's a little list again, but it's not, it doesn't read as a list. It reads as just really, really wonderful language. And then we've got repetition and the most naked, naked mole rat ever. Um, and it's not one of the most naked mole rats ever. It's most naked. So he really pumps up his language. He pumps up the drama. Um, and then we, you know, we turn the page and we get a twist. Look at that picture they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his regal bearing. Look at his total lack of clothing. Grandpa did look heroic. Grandpa did look regal. Repetition. But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Alliteration and repetition. Uh, Ugh, said the other naked mole rats. Don't you get it? Question. Engaging the reader. So as you can see, um, this is just an absolutely wonderful book. Here's the back cover. Here's the front. So he's a very sartorial dude. He's just a delightful character. And Mo Willems is brilliant. Mo Willems, if you ever see this, I love you. And that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little Mondays with Miral. Bye. Bye.